Hi everyone, are you ready for the summer, which is the best time of the year to shoot the Milky Way? Well, if you're frustrated by not knowing exactly when to go, which direction to look, what time of night to go out to shoot this, this little tutorial is going to help solve that problem once and for all. My name is uh, Mike Shaw. You can consider me to be your Nightscape professor. The title of this uh, tutorial is Finding the Milky Way. I'm the instructor for the Star Trails and Night Photography course at the Brian Peterson School of Photography. I'm also the author of The Complete Guide to Landscape Astrophotography. It's a brand new book which you can get on Amazon, uh, my website, um, Barnes & Noble, any of the major booksellers, and it talks about this and many other topics relative to night photography. So jumping right into it then, let's just consider the structure of the Milky Way galaxy because this is where it all starts. And the Milky Way galaxy is not too dissimilar from a pizza. And the center of the pizza, or the galactic core, is a very bright uh, region that has hundreds of billions of uh, stars uh, concentrated into a very bright patch. And you can see this galactic core region in this bottom uh, panoramic image of four different uh, images that were taken across the globe, horizon to horizon. And this bright galactic core region is really the primary target for most nightscape photographers who are interested in shooting the Milky Way, and probably yourself as, as well. And you can see the main band of the Milky Way. That's how the Milky Way galaxy appears edge on. Of course, we're buried within it, approximately right just here. But this is the key question, is when and where can we see the central band, and particularly the galactic core? So one of the things that comes up that's kind of puzzling right from the outset is sometimes you see images like this one from Arches National Park, where the central band of the Milky Way and the galactic core right here is oriented nearly parallel to the horizon, it's laying right down next to the horizon. Other times you'll see the central band of the Milky Way arcing up at an angle like this at the Cape Hatteras National Seashore. And other times it'll be almost vertical like this one from the Eastern Sierra in California. So the question then becomes, well, when and where, what direction do I face? If I want to have the um, this lighthouse behind the Milky Way or this uh, collection of stones, what, what direction, what compass direction am I facing in order to produce these images? And that's what I'm going to show you in the next few minutes in this tutorial. So the first place to begin with this, however, is to recognize that the, the uh, visibility of the galactic core of the Milky Way is highly dependent on the time of year and the time of night. So if you remember nothing else from this video, please try to remember this, the information in this diagram because you'll find it to be immensely valuable. What I'm showing here is, this is a diagram from my new book, it has all the months of the year, January through December, and then all the times of night from 6 p.m. all the way through midnight to 6 a.m. Pretty much covers your bases. And what I've shown here in these little black shaded regions for each month is the approximate time of night when the galactic core, or the GC, is visible. And as you can see for right now in April, it's really visible between, let's say, 2 a.m., and 4 a.m. before it slips below the horizon. But then if we look down here in September, that time changes to 9 p.m. and it disappears by midnight. So depending on the time of year uh, and the time of night, you'll be able to know when to see the galactic core of the Milky Way. So I hope this is, this is at least one very useful thing that you'll be able to take away. Now going back to our uh, situation with the Arches National Park, what I'd like to do is to walk you through a very basic procedure for lining up this shot. And it uses two tools that you're going to want to become very familiar with. The first one is called Stellarium, and the other one is called the Photographer's Ephemeris. We're going to go through each one of those now. So they're going to escape out of this. I'm going to go to um, Stellarium, which is this program right just here. You can get it onto your mobile device as well. What I've done is I've dialed in the latitude through Salt Lake City. You can see this in the lower left corner here. And that's roughly the same latitude as Arches National Park. I've chosen the date to be middle of June when we have a new moon. That's when I was actually out there in uh, 2015. And I've chosen the time a little bit before sunset so you can see what happens as I click through the time as we uh, have the sunset. So clicking on through the uh, evening hours, you can see that the Milky Way starts to become visible as the darkness descends. But we have to change our orientation to, to view it. And you can see when it first becomes visible, it's, uh, it spans a panorama from north all the way down to uh, northeast. And then as the evening progresses, you can see how the Milky Way orientation uh, changes all the way into dawn. And that's a very typical, so I'm going to back that thing up. 
And if we want to have the horizon, if we want to have the Milky Way fairly close to the horizon, like we do here, we see that we're going to need to be facing in a roughly in an easterly direction. And we can be a little bit more precise with that by bringing in these lines of basically night sky latitude and longitude. Each of the spacing corresponds to 10 degrees, so 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. 90 degrees is east, 180 is south. So if we're, let's say, somewhere between 80 and 90 degrees of an azimuth or a compass direction, we, on this date and time, around midnight, uh, Minnesota time or 10 p.m. In, um, in the park, we should be able to see the Milky Way in this orientation. All right, so how do we use that information then to translate into knowing where to stand to make the shot. And that's where this program, The Photographer's Ephemeris, which is a free web app, you can get it um, online, uh, is so immensely helpful. So what I've done here is, I'll back this out a little bit, is I've dialed in Arches National Park on Tuesday, June 16th, 2015. And what we see here are these two pins. There's a red pin and a gray pin. The red pin is essentially you, that's where you're standing with your camera. The gray pin is the target that we're interested in. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the target over here, the gray pin, over here on the north window. So let's do that. I'll just put that right on that little icon just there. I'll zoom in to make sure that it's uh, where we think it is, and that looks pretty good. And so now the question is, where do we stand? You can see a car park here. This is where you're going to park your car uh, to, to walk to your shooting location. It's a beautiful section of the park, by the way. And... The question then is, well, where do we want to stand in order to get the shot that we're interested in? So I'm just going to bring in that red pin. It kind of got away from us there for a second. And we know we're going to want to be somewhere along this path, this loop. It has a pretty good range of angles. And the key thing is, look over here. Do you see this azimuth angle, which right now is at 93.78 degrees? You'll remember from Stellarium, we want that azimuth to be roughly 80 to 90 degrees. So let's say 85 degrees. Okay, so we go back to our photographer's ephemeris, and what we do is we move this, maybe we want to be standing right here. Uh, let's see what that does to the azimuth. That's no good, that's 55 degrees. What about if we're standing over here? That's 75 degrees, so that's getting a little bit better. How about over here? That's 82 degrees. And you can see just by playing around with, that's 90 degrees. I mean, you can, by playing around with this, just look how fine tuning what degree of fine tuning we can get. We can literally say which step we want to stand on to have, that's 86.49 degrees. I mean, you could literally stand, de determine exactly where to stand on this path to get the shot that we're interested in. So I might want to refine this. You can actually see the, the, the window here in this um, satellite image. So we might want to put this on the center of the arch, let's say just there. This is 76 degrees, so we might want to come down here at 72 degrees. Move it back up, 81 degrees, maybe back it up a little bit further, 85 degrees. So if we stand somewhere around here, and I think that's pretty close to where I was standing on that night uh, a couple of years ago, uh, we're going to get the shot that we saw, and that's going to look something just about like this. So uh, with that, I hope that the uh, that's the shot that we're going to get. And you can see, you know, sure enough, here are the steps. You can now make them out on the right-hand side. These are the same steps that you see here that we saw in the photographer's ephemeris. Let's just go back to that so I can show you. Um, what we're talking about there. You can see these steps now going off to the right side of the, of the, of the image. So with that, uh, Photographer's Ephemeris, uh, Stellarium, these are a couple of programs you're really going to want to use. I hope this uh, tutorial helps. Love to hear from you if, if you have any questions. My email address is mike at mikeshawphotography.com. You can find me at the Brian Peterson School of Photography website through my Star Trails and Night Photography course. Love to hear from you. If you have any questions or comments, anything like that. I hope you found this useful. And until next time, let's get outside and shoot your night skies. Take care.